Welcome to the weather forecast for the week beginning Wednesday, June 22nd, and also June 29th. Yep, I'm going to take another vacation. The last one I think I did was the last week of October 2021. So, yeah, time for a break. Uh, Chief Meteorologist John Insworth for Longmont Public Media. All right, so our first lunar phase this upcoming week is Tuesday the 28th with a new moon. And then... Wednesday, July 6th, we have a first quarter moon, which means if it's clear, you'll get a nice uh, moon hanging in the southwestern sky for the night of the fireworks on the 4th of July, Independence Day. The sun this week has some very active sunspots here, uh, so for the next week, if you happen to travel closer to the Arctic Circle, up to Canada or something for vacation, you could see some aurora at night. Nothing is expected to be as far south as Colorado. Looking at drought conditions, we have a little lessening of drought uh, south of Denver, Colorado Springs area, but a worsening of the drought further south in the southwest. Four Corners area definitely needs some moisture. We are drought free here in the northern uh, part of the state, and that's where I hope to go camping. Nationally, uh, not much changes, a little lessening of the drought up here in the Pacific Northwest and on the margin of the um, Great Plains and a little worse down in New Mexico, but a bunch of rain has hit there. Oh, great. And that was a spam call, sorry. <coughs> not going to start over, keep on going. So looking at rainfall, uh, we got some relief down there in the southwest so the place that needed it the most got some good water some two inch greater amounts a few thunderstorms up in i-25 and foothills of the front range but not much out on the plains taking a look at the severe weather climatology from march to the beginning of july you can see the area expanding and probability is getting pretty high third week of june fourth week of june and then first week of July starts to lessen on the plains as the jet stream heads north and cold air usually doesn't invade far into the uh, nation. So, but we are still at our peak. So if you get thunderstorms, they're very likely to be on the edge of severe. If not, have some days we get some marginal or slight risks of hail primarily. It's usually not tornadoes in Colorado, but uh, East July 25 it can happen. But there we are at our peak. Looking at the actual sphere weather forecast for the first three weeks of this 14 day stretch, sorry about that, um, <coughs> we have chance of thunderstorms basically south of Longmont on Wednesday. So you might see some buildups. All of the state has a chance of thunderstorms on Thursday with a little marginal right over here at the Nebraska-Kansas border and on Friday all the state could get some thunderstorms. Looking at the surface analysis we do have this weak front that is down here and ahead of it you have your severe weather chances there. We've got fire, I say here you go, heavy rains and flash flooding, not fire, opposite of fire. Um, so that's really good. That's part of the drought uh, some of the worst drought conditions right now. New Mexico had a, has had long-term fires burning and things like that. For Friday, the southwest is getting... I meant to look this up, but it seems that this really is a very early uh, kicking on of the monsoon uh, that normally hits Arizona and the four corners states, including Colorado. Um, uh, living in Arizona, I think... I think it was like the second week of July is when you usually saw monsoonal flow kick in and it's it's underway. And then for Saturday we have front range and the western part of the state getting some thunderstorms, heavy rain up here on the Canadian border and the front kind of lingering over the northern Rockies. So let's take a look at the normals. The uh, normal high temperatures continue to uh, creep up through July so even though the first day of summer the longest day of the year just occurred on the 21st Tuesday the uh, temperatures do uh, keep going up for a few weeks after that because you're still getting uh, a net increase 
of energy over what can be lost at night. So kind of neat that way. So we're going from 85 to 88 for our normal high, 54 to a whopping 57 by the end. And that's largely because normally there is some moisture slipping in in the beginning of July as humidities go up. The atmosphere can't cool as much at night. Taking a look at Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, this weekend really looks uh, wet. This is going to be a, a lot of moisture coming in. We'll take a look at that in the next maps in a moment. And then beyond that, we have the daily afternoon pulse of thunderstorms. So a little break there, but not much beyond that. So yes, we have a, a high here pumping tropical moisture up into the heart of the nation. We have some coming over the high to our west, kind of giving us a, a flow here. You can see that moisture pretty significant. Uh, this is green is above normal precipitatable water and look at the storms on Saturday night you can see pretty good coverage of rain thunderstorms uh, around the mountains and, and on in the state. Jumping way out to the 4th of July we do have a ridge uh, sitting over the west, big high pressure system. So you'd expect some pretty high temperatures but with moisture high uh, there should be uh, not as extreme highs or lows and thunderstorms around. Pretty good chance actually uh, for the night of the 4th of July. So bring an umbrella, uh, bring some rain covering. So let's take a look at that for the next 14 days now. Here we are on Thursday with a ridge to our south, a little passing trough on Friday. Take a little cooler area and briefly then we just have this flow coming up from the south. There's not really a, a trough passing over the weekend. It's just a lot of moisture and heat. Going to next week, we get the ridge building out west. And then that drifts over for Wednesday. So expect some really good high temperatures. Midweek, a little weakness in the flow coming through at the end of next week. And we're going two weeks out here. so. The ridge reestablishes itself for the 4th of July, Independence Day, and we have sort of northwest flow and moisture circulating around the back side of the high, just coming from the south. Going out into the end of next week, week after next, there's a little trough in the west. I'm not going to spend much time on temperatures here because it's summer, and so yeah, you get the afternoon blossoms of thunderstorms and rain cooled air. There's that little front coming in on the weekend. Yep, cool air. It's kind of unusual. Um, so temperatures will drop with the precipitation and lots of convection going on Sunday and Monday. There's the cold air. Yeah, that is weird to have that much cool air sink all the way down to Texas. Heat comes back Wednesday. The heat, the cool is still down here in Texas in the south. And after that, things become a lot murkier. Here's the 2nd of July, and we have pretty normal heat, a little cool bubble coming down on the 3rd, and the heat kind of comes back for the 4th of July. Yep. So this, this is much more telling at this time of year. This is the precipitatable water, and you can see the moisture flow. Lots of moisture just kind of rotating around in the west. Arizona and New Mexico kind of covered. Here's Sunday into Monday. There's a tropical system down here. That's certainly adding to the uh, moisture in the westerlies. There's Tuesday, Wednesday, the 29th. And even though the dry air comes down briefly, the moisture comes back pretty fast. And so we're never far from at least having clouds and a chance of afternoon uh, storms and showers. Here we are the weekend before the 4th of July. A little dry air comes in, but there's a big surge coming up over Arizona, Utah, and that spreads eastward. So we have a lot of moisture in the atmosphere uh, for Independence Day, and then, <coughs> pardon me, the week beyond that. Look at all that going by in another tropical system. So we can look at the daily afternoon storm chances. It was Friday, June 24th. Going to Saturday the 25th, and there's the weekend storms just popping up around noon or before noon and then spreading across the state. There's Monday into Tuesday, more storms. Maybe a little further south, but still northeast Colorado gets 
some rain, we get a little break on Wednesday, and then stuff comes back after that. There's storms again on Thursday, and then Friday, storms in the afternoon, moving off as a line. Here's the weekend before 4th of July. And we'll get a little break there with that dry air that comes in, and then we get more showers for the 4th of July. Yep. And beyond that, with a surge of moisture, afternoon storms are plentiful. So expect a lot more moisture. This is just great news. The next five days, Longmont area seems to get about a half inch of precipitation. And going out 10 days, we're up to inch to inch and a quarter of moisture. And then snow, I just had to put this in 10 days, snow right there, a little bit north of Durango. And then to go out 14 days, I had to switch uh, websites and go to Tropical Tidbits. And you can see we're almost at the two inch mark well, for the next two weeks. So an inch and a half to two inches of precipitation. The mountains even do better with two to three, even well, three and a half inches in some spots in here worth of moisture. New Mexico too, getting a lot of relief. So great. So taking out two weeks. We start in the 90s, we cool way down to the 70s this weekend with a cool front and high chances of precipitation through Monday. Tuesday it bracks off a little bit, but afternoon storms are still not impossible. And the more moisture we get, the more the, the land and the uh, vegetation uh, becomes healthy and wet, the easier it is for, even on days when there otherwise isn't a lot of moisture, local moisture sources can, can kick off a few storms. For the following week, we return to the 90s when it dries out a little bit. We cool by the end of the week with pretty good chances of afternoon storms. I'm giving this is a long ways out, so take this with a grain of salt. But Monday, uh, the 4th of July, Independence Day, uh, pretty good storm chances, 60%. And then it dries briefly after that, and, and then I'll make another video for you guys. Taking a look at a new month, the Weather well, surface has put out its preliminary month forecast, giving us above normal uh, chances of above normal heat and below normal precipitation, which right now doesn't look like that's coming about. Um, I don't have a graphic for this, but Weather Bell, which is a great uh, site to go to, maybe I'll just bite the bullet someday and spend $25 a month for a subscription there. Um, is calling for the opposite. They're saying the western and central U.S. is going to be below normal temperatures and above normal precipitation. At least the next 14 days, that forecast looks better than what NOAA has been putting out. But we already looked at that, that the past NOAA forecasts have not been the greatest. So I'm at leader.com, broomfieldleader.com for local news and frequent weather updates. I will continue to post weather updates there. It's easy for me to to do that. So this has been the weather forecast for the last week of June and the first week of July. Chief Meteorologist John Ensworth wishing you to keep looking up.